Morning, Cedar Lane. It's holy time. All right. I'm Abhi Janamanchi. My pronouns are he and him, one of the ministers serving this religious community. We welcome you to our worship spirit experience this morning. I'm uh, an Indian male in his 50s. Uh, wearing a, a beautiful flowery kurta and a, uh, what color is this? Burgundy. burgundy, a burgundy vest and multicolored socks. We welcome you all. Let us uh, now, as we gather for worship, turn to our neighbors and greet one another, especially our guests and our newcomers. We have quite a few of our guests here this morning. Let's give them all a warm Cedar Lane welcome.
It is a beautiful day here today. Mm -hmm. mm. As we gather today, let us pause to acknowledge that we are on the ancestral lands of the Nakachtank and Piscataway Konoi peoples, as well as the land where enslaved African people and their descendants toiled without choice or recompense. We honor the land and the people and their enduring presence, wisdom, and stewardship throughout generations past, present, and future. Let me extend a warm welcome to everyone who's here this morning. My name is the Reverend Dana Edwards. My pronouns are she and her. And I'm wearing a purple dress with an orange stole. And I'm a white woman with curly short hair and glasses. I'm so glad you all are here this morning. In this inclusive community, we embrace you for whoever you are, whomever you love, wherever you find yourself on life's journey, and whatever your beliefs, sexual orientation, gender identity, documentation status, or disability. You are warmly invited to bring your whole self here to join us in co-creating worship together. And a heartfelt welcome to all our newcomers and guests, whether you're joining us in person today or online. If you're new or still feeling new and are comfortable doing so, please raise your hand or introduce yourself in the chat so we can acknowledge and greet you with a small token of our appreciation. Let us extend a warm Cedar Lane welcome to all our guests. After the service, we invite all newcomers and visitors to join us for fellowship and coffee. And I know I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but to um, stay and play colors with us. So we'll have more details about that as well. And if you do, Play colors, I hope you brought your holy costumes. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> so if you're interested in learning more about Unitarian Universalism or getting involved in our congregation, please take a moment to fill out the newcomer form that if you're online is linked in the chat or if you're here is in the little gift that we just got you, gave you. And stay up to date on Cedar Lane news and events by signing up for our weekly e-newsletter which is on our website's homepage at cedarlane.org. And if you're feeling called to deepen your involvement and contribute to our mission, we invite you to consider taking the next step on your spiritual journey by becoming a member at Cedar Lane. Your presence enriches our community and we welcome you with open hearts. And if you're interested in joining, please see me or Reverend Dana after the service. And our caring ministry team serves as an extension of the ministry here at Cedar Lane. Barbara Tomar is the dedicated member of the team. She's in the back if you need her in the purple sweater. She's a dedicated member of the teen, team and is available to offer support in person. Thank you, Barbara. <clears throat> as we celebrate Holy, we embrace the rich tapestry of cultures and traditions that make our world vibrant. The Holy Festival is a time of joy, diversity, and reflection on our commitment to inclusivity. In our Unitarian Universalist tradition, we honor the inherent worth and dignity and divinity of every person, valuing the unique perspectives each individual brings as we strive to live into the vision of beloved community together. Today, we are thrilled to welcome Guru Alif Leila, the Sitar Niketan Ensemble, and Guru Abhay Kulkarni, and his students to Cedar Lane. Their, their music transcends boundaries uniting us in harmony and appreciation for South Asian music and the beauty of the sitar and the rhythms of the tabla. In the words of Rabindranath Tagore, 
Let your life lightly dance on the edges of time like dew on the tip of a leaf. So as we gather to experience their music and their artistry, let us embrace the spirit of curiosity and openness, finding peace, fulfillment, and joy. May it be so. In this spirit, we gather. In this spirit, we begin.
Thank you, Manu and Meem. Today is also the 105th birthday of Pandit Ravi Shankarji. So it's a really a beautiful confluence of whatever the universe had in store for us that we are able to have this beautiful sitar music in our sanctuary. Is it beyond thee to be glad with the gladness of this rhythm, to be tossed and lost and broken in the whirl of this fearful joy? All things rush on, they stop not, they look not behind, no power can hold them back they rush on, keeping steps with that restless, rapid music, seasons come dancing and pass away, colors 
tunes and perfumes pour in endless cascades in the abounding joy that scatters and gives up and dies every moment. I'm your worship associate this morning, and my pronouns are he and him. I'm wearing um, some blue pants and a blue shirt. Um, <clears throat> in our Unitarian Universalist tradition, we illuminate a chalice as a beacon of our faith and community wherever we gather. As Kamakshi, Richie, Kiran, and Kailas come forward, to kindle this flame, I invite you to rise in body and or spirit and join in these chalice lighting words. As we kindle this flame, we reflect on this present moment, for within it resides the essence of life itself. In its fleeting embrace, we encounter all truths and experiences, the joy of progress, the power of endeavor. For yesterday fades into memory, and tomorrow exists as a mere possibility. Yet today, lived with intention, transforms yesterday into a tapestry of joy and every tomorrow into a vision of hope. Please be seated. Holi is a joyous festival celebrated in India, Nepal, Bangladesh, Guyana, Suriname, and around the world. Often called the Festival of Colors, Holi is usually celebrated at the end of winter, on the full moon day of the Hindu month of Falgun, which usually is between February and March. And this year, Holi was celebrated on March 25th. We do it at Cedar Lane until it gets a little warmer. <laughs> Holi celebrates the abundance of spring, rejoicing in its return and the reawakening and renewal of life. It is about rebirth, regeneration, life, and fertility, and also the triumph of good over evil. Now, there are several legends about the origins of Holi. One story celebrates the joyous love between Radha and Krishna. As a youth, Krishna, who is an incarnation of Vishnu, the god of preservation and sustenance, despairs that his friend Radha and her companions would not play with him because of his dark complexion. So his mother, Yashoda, suggests that he smear Radha's face with whatever color he wanted. And ever since, the playful coloring of Radha and Krishna's face has been commemorated as holy. During holy, people gather around bonfires and sing songs. The festival is accompanied by fagwa, an agrarian folk music genre significant for indigenous communities closely tied to nature's cycles. And on the day of Holi, people of all ages throw colored powder or gulal or spray colored water using pichkaris at each other. The colors represent the range of human emotions and the diversity of life's many experiences. Holi is particularly important in northern India due to its timing in spring, just before the vernal equinox and the peak maturity of the wheat harvest. This marks the start of 
a month-long activity, including the celebration of the Hindu New Year. And in Punjab, Hola Mohalla is a Sikh festival falling on the first day of the lunar month of Chet, which is usually in March. And it follows Holi by one day, as established by the Sikh Guru, Guru Gobind Singh. And celebration of Hola Mahala features wrestling and martial arts, mock sword fights, and poetry readings, demonstrating the courage of the Sikh community, their strength, and their creativity. And during the Mughal era, particularly under Emperor Shah Jahan's rule in Delhi, Holi, known as Eid e Gulabi, was celebrated with great fervor, and it is still celebrated in India by the Sufi community. This syncretic festival, like equally embraced by Hindus, Muslims, and Sikhs, was a testament to India's rich and diverse religious history. And in the eastern state of Bengal, Basant Panchami is a vibrant celebration dedicated to goddess Saraswati, the goddess of learning, wisdom, music, and the arts. On this day, people dress in yellow, which symbolizes the vibrancy of spring and the blooming of mustard flowers. And they eat yellow food, usually rice prepared with turmeric, and wonderful sweets, always the sweets. Right, Mimi? <laughs> and offer prayers to goddess Saraswati. It's fascinating to see how Holi has traveled across the world. In Guyana, Trinidad, and Suriname, Holi is celebrated as Fagwa. People of all faiths and ethnicities partake in the festivities in the region, as we also do at Sierra Lane. Holi, for us, at Cedar Lane is a call a call to connect with the divine, the holy within, among, and around us, to practice hospitality and inclusivity and our commitment to embrace multiple perspectives and lived experiences, recognizing that there is depth, beauty, and joy in diversity and that our differences need not divide us. Holy high. It's holy. All right. Please rise in body and or in spirit to sing. There are numerous strings. The Hymn lyrics are on screen and also in the gray hymnal number 197.
service. In our worship service, announcements are not merely updates on events and activities. They are invitations for involvement and engagement. Each announcement is an opportunity for members and friends to participate in the life of the community, to contribute their talents and energies, to share endeavors, and to deepen their connection with one another. In that spirit, Amen. we welcome you to join us for a colorful celebration of Holy after the service. We will be playing Holy Colors in the lower level parking lot around 1215-ish. And uh, please look for signs that are posted around the building to guide you to get down to the parking lot. And uh, we hope you will all come and join the fun. It will be wild. <laughs> it sure will be. It sure will be. <laughs> And on May 3rd through 5th is our all-congregational retreat at Camp Takwa. Yes, it's going to be super fun. We had a great time last year. We actually saw bald eagles, and my kids have been asking about it for this year. So I really highly suggest you go. It's open to all ages, and, um, and, it, and it's really you know, geared towards building community and connections. So we'll have archery, a ropes course, water activities, and, um, and, and it's just really a lot of fun. So please join us. Oh, and the deadline to register is April 11th, which is this week. That's right. We extend deep gratitude to the 140 Cedar Lane households that have pledged their support in this year's annual fund campaign bringing us to almost 540,000 towards our $950,000 goal. So we're 60% there, folks. Your generosity is deeply appreciated. To achieve our goal, we aim for 100% participation from every member and friend of our community. Your pledge helps sustain our ministries, our wonderful services like these, support our staff and fund new programs like Welcome Wednesdays and Family Fridays. Nice alliterations yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> if you haven't yet made your pledge, please consider doing so online or at the table outside in the lobby after service. Your support will ensure Cedar Lane remains a beacon of hope and inclusivity for all. Yes. Uh, and on April 9th, which is this Tuesday, join UUs and Christians for a free Palestine in Washington, D.C. to advocate for ceasefire and end U U.S. military aid to Israel and promote a just and sustainable peace. And if you'd like more information about that, you can let me know or Andrew Batcher, who is our social justice coordinator, who's in the back. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And please join the Alliance Luncheon on Thursday, April 11th from noon to 2 in the Chalice House to hear member Don Bliss discuss Mark Twain and the 2024 election. Isn't that intriguing? Mm -hmm. Exploring the author's insights on politics and American democracy during the Gilded Age, which remain relevant today. And get ready for Cedar Lane's homecoming spring auction celebration on Saturday, May 11th from 4.30 to 7.30. We're gearing up for a grand success, but we need your help. Consider offering dinners, vacations, artwork, lessons, gift certificates, or more. Plus, in breaking news, you ready for this? Yeah. <laughs> Check your calendar for a Portugal condo offered June 18th through 26th. So if that sounds cool and interesting to you and you'd like to consider bidding on that, or if you'd like to donate something yourself, stop by the auction table after service and sign up. And I'll testify to it. We're off to Portugal on Monday, and I'll uh -huh. come back and give you the scoop <laughs> about how it was in that condo. <laughs> Let us now move into the space for naming and sharing the joys and sorrows of our community and beyond.
Let us center ourselves and enter into this moment calling upon all the sources of love that are within, among, and around us. In this cherished community where we discover connection and purpose, where we share our joys and sorrows and find comfort, love, and healing. We gather to create a sacred space for each other to embrace and share the joys and sorrows of all present and to keep in our hearts those who are absent today. Within our Cedar Lane community, we hold in our hearts those grieving a loss, those navigating or supporting loved ones through illness or chronic pain, those facing visible or hidden illnesses, and those embracing parenting as a spiritual practice. Our caring extends beyond Cedar Lane, embracing those affected by loss, conflict, and calamities around the world. In our hearts, we hold the memory of all the lives lost in the ongoing violence in Gaza, Israel, Ukraine, Haiti, Sudan, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. We also carry those who have been wounded, both physically and spiritually, as well as those consumed by indescribable anguish over the loss of their loved ones. May our friends, companions in this world, and all the joys and sorrows in our hearts find solace within the embrace of silence and prayer. As we journey into this moment of silence together, those who are mourning a loss are invited to rise, whether physically or in spirit, and offer the names of their loved ones into the silence. May we hold the silence as the silence holds us. I invite us to center ourselves now finding a comfortable position allowing our feet to touch the floor our bodies to relax and settle into a state of ease. Setting aside the garment of busyness, let us be in the presence of the holy that is known by many names and beyond all naming, that is present within, among, and beyond. I invite you to close your eyes if that feels comfortable for you or soften your gaze. And take a few deep breaths, inhaling slowly through your nose, and exhaling gently through your mouth with each breath feel yourself becoming more present in this moment letting go of any tension or stress let us breathe together Breathe in, 
Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. As you keep breathing, bring your attention to your heart center, the area in the middle of your chest. And with your inner eye, visualize a warm light glowing in the space. Your Atman radiating love and compassion for yourself and into the world. As you continue to breathe deeply, imagine this light expanding with each breath, filling your entire body with a sense of love and warmth. Allow yourself to feel this love and this compassion flowing through you. Keep breathing. Now think of someone you love deeply, a family member, friend, or even a pet. Picture their face, their smile, and feel the love you have for them in your heart. Notice how you feel and hold on to this feeling of love and connection. Now think of someone who may be experiencing hardship or suffering. Someone in your community, a stranger, or even someone on the other side of the world. Hold them in your heart. Send them thoughts of compassion and kindness, wishing them peace and healing. Allow the feeling of love and compassion within you expand outward, connecting you to all beings and all of creation. Let us conclude with the ancient Shanti Mantra, the peace prayer, which says, may all be well, may all be happy, may all be peaceful, may all be fit for excellence, may no one suffer. Peace. Peace, peace. Sarvesham swastir bhavatu 
शातेर्भवतु पूर्ण मंगल Let us chant <coughs> Om Shanti Shanti Om Shanti Shanti Om Shanti 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 May it be so
Hi. Happy Holy. Happy Holy. My name is Kamakshi, and I've been a member at Cedar Lane for about 10 years now, along with my husband, Richie, and our kids, Kieran and Kailas. Our family is one of many Cedar Lane families who embody diversity. We are a multiracial, interfaith, neurodiverse family with ancestral roots in both India and Ireland. Cedar Lane's commitment to embracing diversity, multiple perspectives, and inclusivity is the main reason we appreciate this congregation. I mean, where else can you play with holy color powders, hunt for Easter eggs, light the dias for Diwali, and sing, sing Christmas carols all under one beautiful roof? This is what we had been looking for for our children, a place where they can learn and grow their spiritual curiosity in a community that understands and respects all of the world's ancestral wisdom and faith practices. Some of our family's favorite memories at Cedar Lane include the pet blessing, where our miniature pincher is still irritated that other, <laughs> other people showed up with their dogs too. <laughs> And holiday craft day, we're making a wreath, is likely the most peaceful hour of that entire winter season for me personally. We love throwing holy color powders, and my kids especially love chasing the reverence. And I do have a photo of last year, one of each boy on either side attacking Reverend Abby on his knees. <laughs> um, other of our favorite memories include a few years ago when my kids were a little bit younger, um, the Diwali plays where our kids and their friends retold the famous Hindu epic stories about the meaning of Diwali, including that one year during the pandemic where my Kiran created a play via Zoom, retelling the Krishna story, mm. virtually. And speaking of Zoom, during the pandemic, I personally loved the Wonder Box video creation series, uh, where we celebrated Gandhi's birthday at Cedar Lane on Zoom, and my kids learned about the Salt March and presented a very, very cute video, including some very silly blooper reels that I still laugh about and they wouldn't want me to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I never really planned to attend a Unitary Universalist congregation because I didn't know much about you all. I was raised Hindu and continue to believe in and practice the lifestyle and philosophy as a sign of respect to my ancestors. Growing up in this country did leave me a bit curious about people and a bit confused and concerned about all of the, the othering and the insular nature of how we raise our children. My former babysitter invited me to her wedding. She was a Hindu woman marrying a Muslim man. They read from the Quran and the Gita at their wedding ceremony, and it was officiated by a Unitarian Universalist minister in Pittsburgh. I remember thinking how easy and simple it should be to tie together both the Quran and the Gita and focus solely on the love connecting this couple. I was so curious about this Unitarian Universalist minister. Fast forward many years, I met my Irish Catholic husband, and we decided to call that same Unitarian Universalist minister to officiate our wedding in Pittsburgh in 2008. A few years later, our Kieran was born, and I was feeling a pull to find a spiritual home that would feel inclusive for our whole family. Around that time, I was outside in my neighborhood, and my neighbor Jessica Sawyer, who many of you might know, <laughs> told me that her daughter Emily Melgren took her to a church where they have a Hindu Unitarian Universalist minister from India. <laughs> I had never heard of such a thing. <laughs> so I quickly ran to Google <laughs> and indeed found this minister. I was intrigued. I came to attend services at Cedar Lane and also found some of Reverend Abby's sermons 
including a sermon on YouTube exploring the connection between Hinduism and Unitarian Universalism. I continued to feel intrigued and excited. Then I met Reverend Abhi, and he casually mentioned he is from Rajamundry, a city in Andhra Pradesh, India. Well, I was sold. My Rajamundry is the birthplace of my mother, and the same city my maternal grandmother and my great-grandmother all lived. I believe in signs, and I still believe this was my sign. Mm. This congregation has become our spiritual home where we come to celebrate all the holidays, feel inspired and challenged, create fun crafts, laugh together, grieve our loved ones, cry when times feel hopeless, share gratitude when times feel safe again, affirm that we are all born inherently worthy, and gather, gather strength from this community that the belief that our kids and our future will grow well. And when that doesn't resonate, we continue to try to learn how to bow to the mystery. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Kamakshi, for that beautiful affirmation. Thank you. Every Sunday, we give and receive an offering to sustain the mission and ministry of Cedar Lane Unitarian Universalist Congregation and a community organization that is in alignment with our mission. Today, we are honored to share the plate with Bhavana Foundation, dedicated to enhancing the lives of indigenous and underprivileged communities in southern India through education, vocational training, and community projects. A key focus for the foundation is Vidyavanam, a non-residential school in uh, Tamil Nadu near the city of Coimbatore for tribal and poor children from 28 villages. Vidyavanam educates with respect for cultural identity and instills pride in indigenous roots and accomplishments of the children and youth. And your support today directly helps Vidyavanam nurturing children into future leaders and entrepreneurs. Since 2007, Vidyavanam has been kindling holy curiosity in children, encouraging their traditional knowledge and providing platforms for exposure to mold them into future leaders. With 300 students and 30 full-time teachers, Vidyavanam empowers each child to think independently and act creatively, creating a generation unafraid to chase their dreams. The majority of these students are first-generation learners from the villages around Anaikati. And they have many innovative approaches, including the use of zones instead of fixed classrooms for grades two to seven. A group of us, when we were on our trip to India last year, spent a whole day at Vidyavanam experiencing their unique approach to education. So your generosity today will directly support the mission of Vidyavanam and their efforts to help children realize their full potential. So thank you for your support and for being an important part of this cause. As the ushers come forward to give and receive the offering, we welcome Guruji, are you ready? Guru Abhay Kulkarni and his students Akib and Salim.
Tabla presentation. So, Akib and Salim, they'll be performing uh, tabla syllables set to eight beats, which comes to uh, Tal Keherava. So, they'll be performing different variations of uh, basic tabla syllables. Ready? One. Two, three, four. Ta, ta, ti ta, 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 ti ta, 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 ti ta, 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 ti ta, 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 ti ta, 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 Tira kita ta 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 Now, I will be performing a short tabla solo in Tal Japtal. Tal Japtal is uh, set to 10 beats and the, the syllable goes like Thin na, thin, thin na, thin na, thin, thin na. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So 
I'll I'll be having Lehra to keep time, and I will improvise uh, playing a little bit of Kaida, and then finally uh, Chakradhar. Tal Jab Tal. solo with uh, Chakradhar. Chakradhar.
Okay. 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 Hello, everyone. I don't know how to introduce myself, but my name, given name is Alif Laila from the Arabian Nights, and my story never ends. Just <laughs> I am a devoted student, a devoted student of life, of love, and of exploring with the elements that resonate within me, which is music, art, love, motherhood, sisterhood. Basically, I believe in the unity of humanity and of the, the resonance of diversity, just like in the space that I'm standing here with. And I cannot thank you enough, Reverend Rabhi and everyone who in the Unitarian Universalist congregation to have given me this honor, this beautiful moment of synergy with emotion, love, and unity. Today is holy. I mean, it has been holy all year long for me because I play with colors and I spread colors of the resonance of music. Music that knows no boundaries. It is a universal language in all disciplines. And the music that will be expressed today belongs to a culture from the South Asian herit rich heritage and a union of many, many, many cultures and resonances. So it is so, so aptly placed in this moment. I can't tell you, Abhi, how, how excited I am. Sometimes I have to really harness that. <laughs> so the music that will be played today uh, is based on rag santals. The rag, again, sinks with the colors of one's mind, that is also a, a definition, a philosophical definition of the rag. And the tal is the cyclic rhythm that bounds the uh, melody of the heart. So the heart and the soul is in the sync with the cycle of rhythm. So the heart and the pulse unites in the rag and tal. And both have infinite colors and uh, infinite variations and manifestations, and they are born from nature. So giving a name of a rag is just being de defining something, an idea that is expressed in the emotions of the musical phrases. But it is limitless. So sometimes it is very difficult to define and to express this, which is beyond words. And today, with all of this in mind, we have organized a little bit of an idea which of the rag in Rag Durga. Durga is a Hindu goddess. It symbolizes the, the 
joy and uh, uh, celebration of peaceful strength over evil. So with every note, with every resonance, with every tal, I hope you feel that energy. And I am going to very proudly present my sitar children. I call them all my children, and I am a child again at Sitar Niketan because music has no age, no boundary, no, no nothing. It, it crosses, the walls disappear, everything unites, and that's how we, we actually go forward, learn how to walk and talk every day. We are all together in the same path, searching, exploring. So Rag Durga will be played in Teen Tal, and uh, we thank Abhay to, to actually accompany my students. It is truly an honor. Thank you. And uh, Durga has a, is a pentatonic rag. It has five ascending and descending notes, and the Tal itself has a 16-beat cycle. I hope you enjoy, and I am honored again to be here. Thank you all for being with us.
Once more. Wow. Thank you, Guruji, Abhayji, and Sitar Niketan Ensemble for sharing your amazing music and touching our hearts and our spirits. Thank you. Thank you. We close this time again with the words of Rabindranath Tagore. Color me now before you leave me. Color me with your song. Color me in your secret melody. Color me in the light of your laughter. Color me with the kindness of your tears. May your colors color my very soul. May it be so. Happy, holy, let us now depart, partake some refreshments, and then find ourselves in the lower lot to color each other. Blessings. Go for it. <laughs>